What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 37 of our Socio Let's Play here in Football Manager 2018 and today it's the first knockout round of the Europa League, a massive pair of games we're going to be taking on Porto twice. I'm hoping that we can get a little bit further than the first round. Of course the board expectation this year was the first round. Since you were here quite a lot kind of changed in the way of expectation I guess because after what can only be described as a pretty rough run of form um, we finally hit some form of course we had a really rough run and then the episode before last we took on Monaco where we lost 3-2 narrowly we then took on Bordeaux last episode and lost since then we bounced back well it's a little bit frustrating really because you look through these games they're good wins but there are a lot of them against win teams that we need to beat just to be at towards the top of the table and in the games that we have to beat uh, and sorry the games that we have to win the teams we have to beat you know those teams around us we're not doing the business at the moment you can see since you were last here we have played five matches i'm not going to show the highlights of these because there's quite a lot to get through today but we started off with a 4-2 win against mets good little result this one you can see decas with two goals and bula with a goal as well uh, we came back from well taking the lead in this game then being pegged back to 2-2 to grab two more to win the game. That was a good little result there. The next game that we had was against Clermont in the French Cup. We won that game 1-0, not entirely convincingly. You can see to cast the goal scorer again in this one. We then took on Cannes, which was the only game we slipped up in in this little run of results. We drew 2-2 in this one, and well, it was a late, late equaliser. Mikhail Kubik getting it. Well, Mikhail here, he's been very good for us, the Czech Republic International, and he is fined in the back of the net. And you'll know uh, when we go through the next few games, this isn't the only game he's scored in. Anyway, perhaps the one game I will show the highlights for, for here, we took on Amiens. Now, they are a team who are fairly hot on our heels, but going into this game at home, I was hoping that we could get a win in this game, and, well, for a large spell, you thought that we were going to be losing it, to be honest. We got this early goal through Mbula. However, following this, they grabbed two goals very early on into the second half. And while at 2-1 down, it wasn't looking particularly pretty. The definitely kind of questions of the offside on their first goal. But, um, you know, I wondered if this was going to be a bit like the Bordeaux and Monaco games we've had recently. A game that we don't necessarily play badly in, but we just concede in and then can't break them down. But fortunately for us, despite going 2-1 down in the 63rd minute, we mounted a late, late comeback in the last 10 minutes. And while it started here, you can see Kubik running out wide, pulled it back to Mille. Both those players coming in on off the bench in this game, Kubik and Mille. Good to see them linking up. Mille really has been improving a lot in training recently. We then had Felix score a set piece in the 87th minute, and two minutes later, we were going to score again from a set piece and not well cleared corner and we found the back of the net to win the game 4-2 so a good little result there against Amiens and in our most recent game a 3-0 victory very convinced and you can see Kubik, Mille and Trincao with the goals in this game a match that we really did dominate and uh, yeah Trincao did pick up man of the match of course we are now entering February so you might be thinking that the transfer window is closed and it has and you may notice that our wage budget and our transfer budget they're quite healthy and well the reason they're healthy is because we did make a sale and that sale was Jean Ruiz. Not an easy sale to make. We sold him to Red Bull Leipzig. They came with a £17.5 million bid. Honestly, just the kind of deal I can't really turn down for him. Yes, he's a good player. Yes, he is homegrown. But £17 million is a massive sum of money for a player that isn't really playing in the first team. You can see last year he only played nine games for us. Um, oh, sorry, this season he only played nine games for us, and a lot of them were on off the bench. Last season, he was involved quite frequently, but of course Felix came into the team this year and kind of robbed him of his centre-back position. As a result, he's kind of found himself on the fringes, and while with that money, we did reinvest it a little. Of course, it did help offset the books, which were looking a little bit dubious financially, uh, but we did make a few players' signings. The first player we picked up here, Telsa, uh, Tessar, uh, another, well, Czech Republic player. We've got a few of them now in our ranks, and while this guy, very good Czech player, playing in the under-21s, very good kind of mentally. His physicals are pretty well-rounded. Hopefully, they can continue to improve, and he has only just turned 17, so I'm very excited about his potential. Looks like he could be a good little centre mid currently training him as a box to box midfielder because I feel like he'd be better suited in the kind of centre of the pitch rather than as a more defensive midfielder. The only other signing that we've made that has an immediate impact is Bonifazi. Brought him in really as an alternative to Ruiz. With Ruiz going out I did want to get in kind of a player who could play centre back and centre defensive mid. When you compare these two players the age difference just two years 
A tribute wise, Ruiz perhaps has the beating of Bonifazi, but he's only coming in as a backup, the Italian. And we paid, what, £250,000? I mean, peanuts, really. An absolute bargain, as far as I'm concerned, for a backup player who hopefully, you know, will prove useful to us. There was one other signing that we made, and it was this guy. Well, actually, there's one other signing that we've made with money. There's actually another kind of pre-contract signing I forgot about. We've got Timothy Tillman joining us from, I want to say Bayern Munich. Is it Bayern? It is Bayern Munich. He's actually not performed that great, but he is playing regular first-team football in the German first division. Looks like he could be a pretty good kind of useful backup winger. Can play a variety of different positions coming in as a backup kind of what we wanted. The only other player that we've signed is this guy, Kliedson. That's probably not how you pronounce his name, but we've brought him in for, I think, £1.6 million. That was his release clause. Very good Brazilian. A player who my scouts flagged up as someone I should be looking at. And, uh, well, I looked at his scout report, saw the consistency, saw the fact he had a £1.6 million release clause. And, uh, well, we, as you can imagine, just straight away went in for him. He looks like a very good player. I actually see him as more of a striker than an advanced playmaker, but, well, nevertheless, he just looks like a real talented player. And he will be joining us at the start of July. So something to look forward to there. Still yet to be capped for Brazil, which I found pretty interesting. But, um, yeah, good recommendation by my scout, Tim. So, anyway, that's a little bit about the transfers and, obviously, the games that we've played. And, uh, well, we're going to get into today's first match. As I said, we're going to be doing both games against Porto today. We do actually have PSG sat right between these matches, which is actually a bit of a headache for me because uh, I don't really want to play a strong team against PSG. I kind of want to rotate the team uh, because of, well, the players that we've got. In terms of our team for today's game, we are going to have to make a few little changes that are forced upon us. Unfortunately, Kubik is out injured. He started the last game that we played where we won 3-0, but he did pick up a little knock, nothing minor, uh, sorry, nothing major, just a twisted knee, so we'll give him a rest. Elsewhere in the team, though, you can see this is the team we're going to go with. It's going to be Lafont in goal, of course. At left back, we go with Pendant, the reason for that being that Chilwell is out injured. Felix and Diara are going to play the two centre-back positions. Felix has been improving as of late, which is good to see. Of course, Diara alongside him, again, improving as well. These two starting to find an understanding, it feels like. At right back, we are going to go with Pinto for today's game. Ahead of him, we go with Chevalier and Almeida. Of course, we have had Blonde come into the team at the start of January. Unfortunately, he is cup-tied, having played with Bromby uh, earlier on in the competition, so he is unavailable for selection. As a result, Almeida is going to come and play box-to-box -box midfield for us. So you can see, he's played two games in the Europa League as a starter, two off the bench as well. Got six goals to his name, so I'm hoping he could have a massive impact for us today. Ahead of him, we're going to go with Trincao out on the left. He did have a little injury. You can see that pulled hamstring left him out for 12 days and it was quite a densely packed area of the season the last few weeks and well it's going to continue to be for a little while yet. Out on the right I think we are going to go with Mile ahead of uh, Mbula but yeah Mile very very good player of course more of a striker than a winger but we're going to give him a nod today and see how he gets on. Centre attacking mid we're going to go with Almada has been improving a lot as of late. Very exciting to see this guy kind of hopefully break into the first team and really make a big name for himself. 19 years old though playing regular first team football for us has looked very good this season not perhaps contributed on the Ricky Martin level of things that we saw from well Martin last season but as a replacement to him and one who was already at the club he's done pretty well anyway striker for today's game we're going to go with Ducas four goals in his last five hopefully he can set the world alight on the bench though loads of options you know we've got the likes of Fuchs and Bula Moroni Harry Wilson as well so yeah let's see how we get on in today's match a little bit of a shame that we are without Kubik but well we'll have to try and make the most without him here um, playing Porto at home today I want to try and play positively at least to start this game a massive match for us though Porto a very very strong team the last few years in this save they have finished third in the Portuguese top flight as opposed to what you might expect them to be in terms of finishing first or second um, but yeah it's a different kettle of fish to the teams that we've played previously and that's not the start we wanted. Vincinius Jr. with the goal. Actually a player who I've been looking to maybe approach to sign. His contract at Real Madrid is up at the end of the season. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted if, if he doesn't sign a new deal. But at the moment he doesn't think we're good enough. And he's just scored against us to prove his point really. A set piece conceded. Very disappointing there. I was looking back through the recent live comms. We've been in atrocious live comm form. I think the last four episodes we've lost the games. Now granted those were away from home against Leon. Uh, Leipzig, Monaco and Bordeaux but 
are still not that great. I feel like, you know, sometimes you can get into a bit of a pit as a kind of, I, I guess, a YouTuber just doing all the big games because sometimes it's nice to watch your team win. And as I said during kind of us running through the results, it feels like against the smaller teams, we're usually pretty good at being professional against them using our dominance of possession and getting the goals. But against bigger teams, we kind of just struggle a little bit as Felix probably... Well, I say probably. He should have hit the target there. A header at the back post nodded over. Just by the fact that we are struggling to control the ball, I'm going to change things up. I'm going to get rid of work ball into the box and retain possession. It seems a little bit silly when you only have 40% of the ball to be trying to retain possession more. We need to be more, I guess, direct when we do have it in this game. We don't have the same quality that Porto perhaps have in terms of ball-playing players. And I feel like in the league, we can kind of get away with it. But against one of, you know, I don't want to say one of Europe's heavyweights, but certainly one of the better teams in Europe, it's going to be tricky. And well, the change doesn't even happen before Trincao scores. The Portuguese youngster against, well, a club that I'm sure he'll be happy to get one over against. And, uh, well, a lovely little finish as well. Pinto also involved in the build-up. Of course, we do have a fair few Portuguese players playing for us today. In fact, there's three in the starting lineup at least, now that I think about it, which is kind of surprisingly high. So they might be a little bit familiar with how Porto are going to play here. I'm going to make that tactical decision to go more attacking and a little more direct. Uh, Daily Bling going to take this throw in for them. Can we stop them getting it into the middle? Chevalier to Oliver. Vargas blocked away by Armada. Can we break away now? You know, it's a little bit disappointing that we've conceded against them and given away the away goal. So I'd kind of like to win this game on the night if we could. It's not going to be easy, though. And, of course, with us going on the attack, it is going to leave us susceptible on the break. As, well, that looks like it might be what they're trying to do. But we win it, and we deal with it. And Decas, well, he's on his lonesome, but he's m marching away. Charges away. Hits it. Hits the woodwork. What a goal that would have been. The solo effort by Decas is charging down Porto. Smashes the crossbar. So far in this game, despite our inability to control the ball, we've created more in the way of shots than Porto. We've looked pretty good so far in this game. And, uh, well, hopefully we can get our noses ahead in the second half. Despite how well we've played, I'm going to tell the players I'm far from, please. I want them to be fired up. I want them to be angry. I want them to get mean. And I'm hopefully uh, well, going to see a response from them in this half. Can we get on the front foot? Can we get on the attack and find the back of the net? That's going to be the challenge. 55 minutes gone now. I mean, at what point do we start making changes? I usually wait to the hour mark. I feel like that's where we'll wait now. As we're on the attack, if we score, then suddenly it becomes a little more relaxing. Pendant back in the first team to Decaz. Lovely touch around the keeper, or rather around the defender. But then he got the shot past the keeper, but also past the post. Set piece here. Trincao whips in. Diara nods it down to Decaz, who hits it wide again. He's missed another chance. Not necessarily great chances here for Ducasse, but ones that are certainly going to be countered. I'm going to take off Mele for Embula. Um, Almada's not played great. Uh, I'm going to bring in Moroni, I think, for Almada in the centre. Moroni been a little bit out of the first team as of late, but we're going to give him a chance here, the Argentine, to have an impact. 20 minutes left. 1-1 one, one wouldn't be the worst result in the world. Given how well we've played, I'd like a little more from it. But, well, 10 minutes left... I don't really want to go more attacking. If we go more attacking, we're going to leave ourselves more exposed. At the moment, we're kind of it feels like we're finding a bit of a balance. And, uh, well, Daily Blind is going to get sent off here. Now we go on the attack. <laughs> now, now that we've seen them lose a man, I feel like now is the moment where we do have to just push a few men a little bit further up the pitch, you know? Be a little bit more aggressive with it. Um, in terms of what we're going to do, I think we're just going to kind of mix things up slightly. It's essentially a four... 4-3-3, three, three, but there's not a lot of time left in this game. I could make the one last tactical change, but we lack attacking options on the bench, so ultimately I feel like we've just got to stick with what we've got and we'll hope that we don't concede a last-minute set-piece. That's not what we want to concede. Chevalier trying to stand up Danilo. Do not let him get the ball back forward. Palinio with it, passes it across. Let's not concede last minute. Lafont holds on to it. That should be all she wrote. That was a chance for Porto at the death, but Lafont's held on to it, and I think... Touch wood, we are about to get a 1-1 result, which wouldn't be the worst result. It puts an end to our losing run, although Decas, I mean, for a second you believed. For a second you thought it might be possible, but unfortunately that finish was god-awful in the end. It finishes 1-1 here, and well, at least going into the second leg, there is reason to be optimistic. That was a good little performance by us. We really kind of gave them a good run. As I said, we've got that PSG game coming up. I'm not going to live comment purely because I'm going to just probably sack off that game, completely rotate the team. Um, 
we need to rest up the players that we've got. You know, two days is just not a lot of time to recover us at all, less than 48 hours. So I'm going to rest the players that we've got here, hope that we can go into the well second leg fresh and will maybe cause an upset away from home. Anyway, let's skip forward. I'll see you guys in just a second. And well, let's see how we get on once we go to Porto. Okay, guys, so here we are back again. Of course, we've gone forward a week in time. You can see we did take on PSG. And to be fair, our B team didn't do that bad. In the end, we only lost 2-1. Um, it could have been more. It should have been more. We, we got very lucky, to be honest. But you can see the team here was very rotated. Gautier playing, Ali playing, Lacroix. Um, obviously, a few players who aren't going to be available for selection today also played. The likes of Blonde, for example. Unfortunately for us, Kubik did get injured in this game. A foot injury that's going to keep him out for a few weeks. So... Uh, well, he wasn't available for the first leg, and well, our new striker's not going to be available for this second leg either, so we are going to have to do it without him. But anyway, you can see in terms of the team news, I'm mixing things up. We are going to try the 4 3 3 today. Uh, I want to be a little bit more solid in the midfield. I want to have a few more men here. And I also want to try having Mbula out on the left and Trincao out on the right. Of course, Trincao left footed, Mbula right footed. Uh, might suit us a little bit better. And I feel like we are quite well suited to try and give this system a go. So, um, yeah, a few changes from the team that you saw last time out. I believe the back four and the goalkeeper is the same. In the centre of the midfield, I've decided to drop Almada for Almeida. Actually, I think Almeida did play before, but he lost his box-to-box -box midfielder role to Fuchs, who was on the bench last game, who I've decided to bring back into the team. But, yeah, not massive changes, really. It's a bit of a shame about Kubik. You'll notice Sambula's back in the side, of course. On the bench, we've got options, though. We've got the likes of Moroni, Almada, Harry Wilson, Mile, and Dougie Pote. So, yeah, if we need to change things up, we've got players who can definitely kind of make those differences for us. Away from home, though, it's not going to be easy here against Porto. You know, there isn't a massive expectation on our shoulders going into this game. 1-1 was a good result last time out against them, really. The board expectation this season is to get to this stage in the, the Europa League. We've done that. You know, on our de debut in Europe, we've got out the group stage, which is a good achievement. But I do want to give them a good run for their money here. And, well, we need to defend well here as we are already on the back foot. That shot goes narrowly wide of the mark. But, yeah, I don't want to sound too defeatist. I want to win this game, of course. But... I feel like given our form as of late against the big teams, the teams that we need to win, I want to just see us push them hard here. Push one of the big teams in Europe and see what our young team can do. As Vargas here deflected, shot. My head's in my hands. What can you do about that? Not a lot, really. You've got to feel bad for Lafont in goal. Because he goes one way. And the shot's just deflected into the opposite corner. Obviously, it's a learning experience this game for us, but that feels cruel. Who was that who it hit on the head? Number six, Chevalier. I mean, I feel bad for him. There's not a lot he can do about that. And, uh, well, Porto take the lead in this game. Looking at the stats, I mean, we're not doing a whole lot with the ball or without at the moment. And they're on the attack again. If Vargas crosses it in, set pieces have been a kryptonite for us in recent years. Lafont this time does hold on to it. I mean, 30 minutes gone here. The game plan just hasn't worked. We've got to change things up. I feel like it might be worth switching to the counter system, a system that we definitely have the players to play and the formation that we're playing is the right formation to play it. Let's give it a go. Let's go with the flat back four, two centre defensive mids holding. Let's see if we can weather the storm here. Of course, if it stays at 1-0, we'll know that just one goal would take it to extra time and you know, when the game gets later on, maybe then is the time to push. But, uh, well, that first half, just... Not good enough. Whatever way you look at it, we just weren't at the races there. A deflected shot is a cruel way to go a goal down. But when you afford Porto as many chances as we have, it's kind of to be expected. Lafont's been pretty good in goal, to be fair, making lots of stops. Maybe we can step it up in this second half and show what we're all about, really. But yeah, a young team, a learning experience this European campaign, certainly. But I want it to go further. I want to see us get more of a chance and, well... Oh, you thought for a shit second Almeida was going to score the set piece. We had, of course, Trincao, who's Portuguese, score against them in the home leg. You thought for a second it might be another Portuguese player getting us the goal there. Let's change things up here. Almeida's had a really poor game. We'll bring in Almada for him. Out on the left end, Bula's not done that great, really. I want to stick with this counter system until the 70th minute. Then I'm going to have to go on the attack. I mean, hopefully we don't concede from here. Otherwise, we could be in trouble because we will need two goals. Uh, Polinio, loads of space out wide for him, pulls it in, Vargas heads it wide, I mean, it's a warning shot in our direction, isn't it? 
Let's go to our standard system. It's been a bit of a, a, a mixed bag in terms of our performance today. We've not really got going. I am going to tell the players to play more direct, and we will slip just slightly deeper. But, um, yeah, generally speaking, we've got to make some changes. I think we're going to bring in melee to play as inside forward. It's a bit of a shame that we're Kubik injured. We are kind of limited in our striker options on the bench. But, I don't know, we'll make the most of the changes that we do have here. But let's make sure we don't concede now. That would be a problem. Tackled away by Pendant. Set-piece change happens. Can we defend the set-piece? Oh, my God, they should have scored it. They've smashed it over the near post. And, uh, well, we're looking for options in the final third. That we most certainly are. We've probably got to switch the wing-backs on to attack as well. We've not got long. We've got 17 minutes to try and get more from this game. I'm going to change Fuchs, I think, to a deep-line playmaker on support and Chevalier to defensive midfielder on support. I do want us to be a little more solid in that kind of just central area. I don't want us wandering quite so far up the pitch with a Mazala um, because with us now looking for our wing-backs to provide the overlap, we might be you know, a little bit susceptible in the middle. Anyway, set piece here. They've whipped it in to the edge of the box. Let's not let Vincidius Jr. get the shot away. It's deflected again. My head's in my hands. I mean, it's another set piece that we've conceded. I think it's actually been given as an own goal as well. That is so unfortunate. Two deflected shots find the back of the net. We've afforded them one clear-cut chance. I don't think either of the clear-cut chances were the deflected shots. Melee on off the bench with that. And it just feels a little bit cruel, doesn't it, to have those shots deflect in. As they have. I mean, we've got nothing to lose at this point. We might as well just stick everyone on attack and see what we can do here. Um, yeah, there's just no, no time, really. We've got to pump the ball into the box if we can, hit early crosses, and just try and make something happen in the centre. There's no real time here. We've got, what, six minutes to try and get two goals? We are going to be leaving ourselves more and more open at the back as well, which is not really what I want to do here. But, hey, we've got to go for it. Vincidius Jr., though, what a run. And it's deflected in again. <laughs> I swear I've not seen that many deflected shots in the match engine this year. But this is something else. It finishes 3-0. Two of them will go down on his own goals. The other was a massive deflection as well. Oh, I mean, sometimes it's just not your day in football. And I think whatever way we look at this, this game against Porto, it's just not been our day. Unless we're now going to score three goals. Uh, things are not going to change my mind here. The deflected shots are just so cruel, so unfortunate. There's nothing you can really do about them, you know, in terms of when they happen. I guess the only thing you can ask is, could we have prevented the long shots? I guess in playing a deeper style of play, we invited them onto ourselves. But, I don't know. I don't feel like you can ever factor in for the, the, the poor luck we've had today. It's been something else, really. You know, those little bounces that could go anywhere twice have hit the back of the net. You know, the, another one... Deflected it past the keeper. Porto are a very good side, though. You know, we shouldn't get too hung up on this result. And we have a very young squad here. You know, the average age is probably 20, 21 in this squad. This European campaign is going to give us some learning room. And, uh, well, given how we've done this year in the league, there is a chance that we could get in the Champions League next year. And this Europa League run, as premature as it feels like it's about to end on, um, it will provide us with, I think... A good test this this kind of whole campaign in terms of we now know that our team depth is pretty good. I'm kind of happy with the overall balance of the team. Uh, and, well, hopefully, you know, if we go into Europe next year, we've got a squad capable of dealing with the, the fixtures, I guess. It, it, I mean, it seems like a really crap silver lining to look at, but we'll have to enjoy it for what we can. We're given £445,000 there. If we just look at the board kind of happiness you can see they're pretty happy with how things are going in terms of competitions the Europa League our expectation was to reach the first round we've done that unfortunately I guess to lose it as we have just looking at the league of course we did lose to PSG I mean I mean this competition now becomes our focus because uh, whilst we are in the French Cup there's still quite a few rounds left of that but just looking at the league you can see we are currently in fourth. Nice are only two points behind us. Toulouse, five points behind us. You can even look at uh, Lyon and Bordeaux as kind of teams really kind of chasing now. They're going to be teams we definitely have to keep an eye out on. And even Amiens down in ninth could still push us all the way. Ahead of us, Marseille aren't that far clear. Monaco have a little bit more breathing room. In terms of our fixtures coming up now, we have got Marseille coming up. I probably, I mean, I probably should do that as a live com. Next time out, that might be a game we come back and do. It will be a big game for us. Again, it's another away-from-home game in the league. And our away form this season has been pretty poor. You look at it here, the defeats against Monaco away from home, Bordeaux away from home. 
Uh, Lyon away from home. Red Bull Leipzig was away from home. Metz was away from home. I mean, have we lost... Uh, I was about to say, have we lost in the league at home yet? I think the PSG result was the first time we've lost at home in the league. But we need to book up our away form against the big teams and maybe Marseille are going to provide us an opportunity to try and do that. But anyway, hopefully you are looking forward to that Marseille game. It's not that far away. I will see you guys for it. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please do leave a like on the video. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.